Hi. Well, thank you, Laura. Thank you to the chamber. Thank you all for tuning in and uh, participating in this webinar. Um, let's go virtual. There's so many options for virtual event platforms that'll help you connect with your audience in meaningful ways. We're going to narrow down some of those options by asking questions about features that you may need to ask yourself when considering uh, which platform to use. Um, like Laura said, Andrea and Sarah are in the chat. Uh, we want this to be a conversation, so maybe uh, connect with somebody else you see there that does similar events as you and talk to them. We want this you know, to have a lot of participation um, so that we can all learn from each other. Um, let's define what we're looking at here. You know, we want to determine the platform, so we need to look at three things. Let's look at attendee experience. What kind of attendees, who are they, what kind of takeaways do you want to have from the event, and then financially, you know, maybe you want to sell tickets or do fundraising inside the platform, and then the content. What types of things are you putting into your event that you want your audience to experience, the elements you're putting together to create that for your attendees. We're gonna show you some examples as we go through, and I'm gonna point out different features and what uh, each of the platforms did or what uh, organizations themselves did. So when we focus on, or when we look at the first element of the attendee experience, we are looking at this list. You know, maybe you're a group that does one of these types of events. Um, each event, each type of event has their own needs for interactivity, content availability, um, things like that. So the first example we're gonna look at is Vectorworks. They were going to have an in-person design summit where you buy tickets to attend, it was only for those people, uh, but because of what has happened, they've now released all of their content for free and it's hosted on their website. Everything is uh, you know, consume at your own pace, uh, which I like, and so you can do a session, take a break, do a session. Um, I'm not distracted by other links taking me outside of their page and um, the fact that they've made it open and to the public is, is really great. So let's talk about that, uh, public versus private. Are you doing something on a public platform like Facebook Live or YouTube where your users may be familiar with those because they're using them uh, in their recreation as well as you know, uh, a professional environment? Or maybe your attendees are used to buying tickets and they're used to that private event, having to register and things like that. Um, when considering a public platform, you do need to be careful of what types of content you're hosting. Um, they have policies uh, for things like use of alcohol, attire, uh, swearing. Um, so make sure that the content that you are giving to your audience uh, complies with whatever their content policies are. Uh, we're gonna look at a platform called Blue Jeans. Blue jeans can be public or private, uh, depending on how you configure it. This is the interface. It looks very similar to Zoom, um, just kind of formatted uh, differently. But I, I really like the clean appearance that it has. You can see on the right-hand side, it has options for chat and polling and things like that. But I, I just really love that layout. Um, What's also great about Blue Jeans is the moderator side of it. So from the moderator's experience, driving that attendee experience. You can turn polling on and off. Uh, you can turn presenter, if you have multiple presenters, you can turn their microphones on and off. And, uh, and that, that's really laid out nicely for that moderator. But maybe you're a trade show and the attendee experience you wanna have is like walking into a convention center and you want the graphic design to look like you you know, you could go this way to go to the general session or that way to the exhibitors or have a place for sponsorship recognition uh, visually. This, is, this product is called In Expo and uh, I really like how, they laid, how they've laid that experience out. The second topic that we're going to consider when choosing a platform is your financial goals. Uh, you know, maybe your live event was a big revenue generator and now you're concerned that you're not gonna raise that money again. Several of these platforms have ways to do that uh, built right in. And it's important to remember 
people still want to support your organization. So don't feel like uh, people aren't gonna participate because people are looking for ways to connect with you. So maybe some of these transactions are donations, or maybe you have the opportunity to incorporate ad revenue. You're going to sell um, sponsorship time or something like that, or maybe it's on the front end uh, where you're selling tickets. Uh, different platforms allow different ways to have these transactions. Um, let's look at, I, you know, I mentioned the In Expo example earlier where it's a trade show. This is another trade show platform uh, called Pathable, and they allow you to do your entire conference on their platform. You could have general session, breakouts, but we're looking here at exhibitors. Maybe you're used to selling exhibit booths or selling sponsorships. This platform allows you to have a list of exhibitors, tag what industry they're in, and then as an attendee, I can go in there and search for things that I like. And uh, the pop-out example in that picture in picture is Amazon. Amazon's sponsoring this event. I'm interested in what Amazon does, I click that. And then those yellow buttons that you see, I can set up a time as attendee to connect with them. So if you want the ability to still generate revenue by having exhibitors and support the business that those exhibitors will do, uh, maybe Pathable is the right answer for you. Um, another option is Crowdcast. Crowdcast has some really cool features for in-app transactions. They have a call to action button. So while your presentation is taking place, you can say, hey, it's time to donate. Everybody donate now. You can click on that. Or maybe you're selling tickets for a public event. You can sell tickets through this platform. But what makes the other thing that makes this platform unique is it has a social platform. So if you want people to uh, follow you, maybe you're doing multiple events and you build up a following. Um, now what was your local event could have a broader reach and you could have the potential to just raise more money or engage more people uh, just by having people like your channel and follow you for your events. Um, let's, you know, I talked about ticket selling and things like that. What about now that you're having your virtual event and you may need other service providers. So instead of money coming in, now it's you know, money going out through these other vendors you may need. You might have a registration platform already like Cvent or Eventbrite or something like that. Can your virtual event platform import all those registrations or do you need something that will do that for you? Uh, or maybe you need to spend uh, some money having a website, an event website built for you, where normally you could have just gone to your events tab on your page and just had a calendar for people to uh, add that to their Outlook or something like that. And then there's the third possibility that your attendees may be consuming what you're presenting on multiple platforms. So we're gonna look at a service next called Caster. And uh, let's say you're a church and it's Sunday and it's time for the service and you have a contingency of people who see your updates on Facebook. So having something go out to Facebook Live is great. But let's say you're a family and you're at home and you want everybody to participate in the service together and you wanna watch it on TV. A lot of smart TVs and Apple TV boxes, things like that will have the YouTube app built in. So now you need to stream to Facebook for those people and YouTube Live for these people. Uh, but then there may be a whole other group of people that want to uh, watch the service on your website. Caster allows you to stream to multiple platforms. It's, it, it's basically re-streaming your stream. Um, and it can send streams to Periscope and Twitch and all sorts of other locations. So that's a pretty cool service to consider uh, for doing that. Um, so let's look at content now. What types of things are you putting together to make your show or event happen. Maybe you have live video like we're doing right now where you know everything's live, it's happening in the moment. Uh, maybe like the Vectorworks example I showed earlier, everything's pre-recorded. You can, can kind of consume it at your own pace. Maybe you're gonna do something that combines both. And I really like this option because it allows you to tell stories in a different way. You can go outside or the camera doesn't have to be stuck in the one spot. You can really engage uh, multiple different techniques for telling your story. 
And then, you know, the event on demand, is it going to be something that uh, people will pay to log into your platform, do the event, log out, log back in, that type of thing? Um, and then maybe you have something really specialized, like 360 degree video. There's a platform called Vbrick, or they're, they're a manufacturer or a, a, you know, a, a brand, and they have a product that will allow you to do 360 degree video. So maybe you're doing content with tours or you know, all environments all around, and you need something highly specialized like that. So just make sure that your platform can support these different elements. Um, we're gonna look at something that we did uh, with our client Hills, where they incorporated both a live and pre-recorded content. It was a two-day conference. Uh, they typically held it in person with some streaming elements added to it, but this time they did a 100% virtual conference. Their MC was here in Kansas City in front of our LED wall, and he hosted the program. Um, but then they had breaks since it lasted two days. And so one of what you're seeing now is the band. The band was pre-recorded, and the way the MC interacted was he introduced the band, you know, got everybody excited, and then walked off, and then we cut to the band walking on and playing their instruments. So it really felt like it was live in that moment. And they positioned that during mealtime, so to break up, to allow people to go get food, but then also to have something on the stream that was entertaining. Let's talk, and, and that's a single room example. Everybody was on that same stream. Let's talk about if you have multiple places where you want your attendees to go. Maybe you're doing a general session, and then you want people to go to breakouts, and then back to the general session. You know, that Zoom will allow you to have a stream and then break out into rooms and come back. Um, that example that I showed with Pathable, Pathable, you can have your general session and then pick what breakouts you want to go to and then go back to the general session. Uh, maybe you're doing a continuing education conference where your professionals will be watching one stream and your students will be watching another. Or maybe it's that on-demand where you have content variety and you're picking which breakout session you want to go to. I want to show an example of a single channel environment. This is live stream by Vimeo. And their platform um, is really great for behind the scenes. If you have a lot of content you're showing, they have a toolkit that your production partner or tech uh, person would likely be using uh, to push content. This is the moderator view that you're seeing right now, and they're controlling what polls are going up. But I really like, they have a feature-rich uh, studio tool, basically. It's called Livestream Studio Tool, and it's really great. Okay, um, content quality, the quality of the video that you're sending out. Uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, like I used with the church example on Caster, maybe you have people watching on different platforms like a cell phone or a computer, things like that, and you want your content to look great on, across all of those platforms. You may need something with adaptive video, and that just means it's gonna control how big the image is, how much data is going to that image based on how much bandwidth or processing power that your device has. Maybe you're doing something with music where it's going to be uh, stereo and you want that stereo experience. Some of these platforms will only do mono sound, so you wanna make sure that your platform can do either mono or stereo uh, based off of what you're doing there. And then I have 1080p versus 720p. You don't necessarily have to know what that is, uh, but if you're wanting something with more resolution, you want something that looks nicer, um, you're gonna want that 1080p. If it doesn't matter, if it's more just, um, you know, you wanna get your content out there and it's okay if it just, if it looks just a normal amount of good. You can have something with the 720p, but I wanna show you a platform that does really high-end video. I mentioned VBrick Rev earlier with the 360-degree video. This is an example of their on-demand platform. So you can log into your VBrick Rev site for your event, 
Your attendees can watch the videos that they want to watch. There's these, even a scheduling feature where you can schedule things to happen and consume the event that way. But I want to show you the next example of their live. So this is Rev with a live event experience. This is Simmons Leadership Summit. Um, they are considered to be the premier women's leadership conference in the world. And so they want a really high quality video solution. You can see by the picture here that all of the images that they're pulling from their presenters cameras look really good. Um, it still has the interactivity that you're used to with the chat features and polling. Um, so if you were wanting something high end, maybe Febrix Rev would be the platform for you. Let's talk about interacting with the audience. You know, you guys are putting chats, uh, putting comments in the chats and things like that. Um, maybe you're having somebody moderate uh, those chats or um, maybe there's a, a poll that you're putting out to the audience. I wanna show you an example of a really cool thing that, again, Hills did while we were helping them. They had, they had their own website, so they're hosting this on their own platform. And you can see the box in the corner, it says, ask a question. And so they gathered people's questions and compiled them. And then when they started to see similar questions being asked, they were able to let the MC know via an in-ear monitor and he could address the questions and get that information out to the people attending. So I thought that was really cool because it's not distracting. You're not seeing tons of comments uh, going by and trying to keep up with those while you're also doing the presentation. They also have some on-demand stuff, some uh, post-event content, if you will. This other pop-out window that is showing on there allows you to download presenter notes or even continuing education certificates after the event, which I thought was really cool. When, now that we're talking about after the event, the, the event is over, uh, now what are you gonna do with all this content? You've maybe recorded some videos or you've recorded the live stream. Are those breakout sessions going to be for purchase? Does your platform even support having the content on afterwards or are you having to pull that over to another website? So that's something that you're going to want to consider. For my example on this, I want to show you Planet Comic Con. They're considered to be, or they are, the region's largest pop culture and comic book event. Uh, they had to delay their event, uh, but found a way to continue to connect to their audience, provide value to their artists and exhibitors that were going to uh, participate in their event. So they're producing these interview live streams with celebrities, artists, and exhibitors that were going to be there at the event or that will be when we can have the event again. And uh, these videos, you could either watch them live and then, or go to the Planet Comic Con Facebook page and watch them after the event. So they are engaging that on-demand feature for Facebook for their attendees. So let's review. We've talked about the attendee experience, and financial goals, and the content considerations. Um, so what story are you trying to tell? What content are you trying to deliver? Are you trying to raise money? Are you trying to have interactions? Those types of things will all help you narrow down to which platform you're trying to pick. And I hope these questions and examples have been helpful for you, but I really encourage you, if, if one of these products stood out to you, ask for a demo. A lot of these companies will give you a live demo, walk you through their software so that you know all of the ins and outs. Um, they're there to help you. They do want your business, um, so don't be afraid to, to reach out to them and ask. If you have questions for us, I know you've been putting stuff in the chat, but you're welcome to email us at events at Harvest KC. We would love to help you with your virtual event. And with that, I just wanna thank you guys for participating. Thank you to the Chamber for hosting us. And thank you to Laura for uh, just inviting us. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. I think we have time for one or two questions. Um, it looks like Kelly, posted in the chat just now, after today's webinar, is it possible to post somewhere a list of platforms discussed today? Yeah, so uh, when the video gets posted to YouTube, we can include in the comments sections the links to all of these platforms that we reviewed today. So just Great. go back to the YouTube page for that. Great. 
And then I have a question. Um, okay. I know probably very everybody else is just as anxious as I am. When do you guys believe that we'll be able to have in-person events again? Or is it virtual, something we should just look forward to the rest of the year? Um, I, I don't think that I'm going to directly answer that, uh, <laughs> but what I do what I do want to encourage everybody by is, you know, the states and local governments and all that will roll out when people can get back uh, together or how many people, things like that. But if you plan for a virtual event, it is relatively easy to then turn that event into a live event. I've got a microphone on, I've got lights here. Um, speakers, so it'd be very easy to put seating in this room and have people come over and attend this live just like you have virtually. So I, don't, I know that larger events like trade shows to load in a whole exhibit all may require a little bit more lead time, but to just not plan or not do anything I think could be a detriment. So, so I, I would my answer is just move forward with something virtual. You can always change your mind as you go. Yeah, yeah, that's great advice. Um, one more question is, in your experience, what's the lead time for preparing pre-recorded content? Um, I have a little formula that I do. I know depending on what pre-recorded content uh, you, you have, it could maybe take longer. But if you're editing something together, either for every minute of video, it's going to take one, or it's gonna take four to eight hours of editing to make that minute of video look good. That's a kind of a formula that I have. But if you're doing something like this, where you have your speech ready to go, you have your slides ready to go, you could come here to North Kansas City in our studio and just record it in a day, maybe. Or it just depends on how complex your material is. And okay, I lied, I have one more question. <laughs> That's fine. Um, we, um, thinking about in-person and virtual, a hybrid of events, is that something possible to do with including both, maybe less audience, but still have people attending in person? Um, how, how does that work or where, is that possible? I mean, I kind of referenced that earlier with when can we get back into doing live events again. I think there will be a trend of hybrid events. There will be a contingency of people who are ready to get out there and be there in person that are gonna wanna show up and travel to your event. And then there's gonna be the other people who are gonna wanna stay home. Maybe they have health concerns and just have to stay at home. So event planners are going to have to plan to, to incorporate some level of hybrid event. It is something that Pretty much everybody's talking about, a lot of people are talking about, well, now now I need to have some online component. I would say it's it's very easy, like I was saying. For, for what we're doing today, if people were here, um, all we'd have to do is just add some chairs and turn on the lights in the back of the room, and now we have a hybrid event. It's coming out to you and the viewers, and then the people in the room would also be able to hear you. We could even feed people like you who are remote into the room so that the audience in the room can hear too. So it's possible and really just the deciding factor is, I guess, budget. Can you afford to do it? And then does the venue that you're in, do they have the internet bandwidth to be able to handle uh, an experience like that? And you may have to pay for that internet bandwidth at your venue, especially if you're at like a hotel or convention center. Um, it looks like another one just popped up. Can you share information about sponsorship assets and exposure for corporate sponsors? Um, yeah, so the, the platform that I talked about, Pathable, um, they have uh, areas where sponsors can go to um, either talk about what they are, what their offering is or why they're sponsoring. Um, there is a section for them to put videos and text and link to their own website. So I can, um, with the link on the YouTube page, I can connect to the, the sponsorship tab on that particular product. Um, but even in a scenario like this, if somebody was sponsoring this Zoom meeting, their logo could be up on the screen, just like how I have my logo up there you could sell that airtime on your screen too. So there are ways to uh, give your sponsors benefit during it. You could even let them play a video during the stream itself. 
Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Sarah and Andrea and Tyler for all your work today. And thank you all for attending as well. Uh, make sure to check out the KC Chamber calendar for upcoming webinars. I posted the link in the chat. Um, and also feel free to reach out to me if you have any other questions or Harvest. Um, they have, I can post their I will send a follow-up email with the recording, um, with the links and everything, and then I will also include Harvest, their email, so you can reach out to them for questions um, regarding all this information. Thank you guys for joining us today, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and an even better weekend. Bye, guys. Bye.